Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Welcome to We Ain't No Stupids. It is me, the Zen Master, to my left. Uh, B, Booby, General Boss, whatever you want to call me. All right, Shit. next to the boss. What's up, man? It's Kenny Kenny, what they call him. I'm here. First time. Glad. Appreciate right. it, man. All right, cross me. Uh, Mr. J underscore Cruz 88. Back in this bitch. All right. Uh, these two weren't here last week, so we're going to... Um, do uh, the, basically the same episode we did last week, same topic, same questions, and get uh, different points of views on it from cool. these two brothers. Uh, but, you know, first question, so uh, you haven't seen us, so I'll give you a quick rundown of kind of what us is. So you've seen the previews and shit, right? I've seen a couple previews. I've heard enough spoilers about this shit. I feel like I've seen it. I haven't actually uh, man, seen it. see it, man. You got to see it. Yeah, no, nah, I'm going to watch it. Don't, don't get dope. it twisted. I'm, oh, I am going to watch it. I do want to watch dope. it. I just haven't gotten around to seeing it. All but, right. um... But okay, so the first question, you don't have to really see it. I just need you to know, like, just see, as long as you've seen the preview, and I can go into it with the question. All right, so um, there was an interview that there was an interview that um Jordan Peele did, where he said that uh basically the movie's about the things you try to bury come back to haunt you. Mm. So it's like the things that those so those characters you see are the things that uh, they don't like about themselves, and they try to push down and try to repress those guys. They come back in the form of mm, the like tether. The tether. Yeah. yeah. So, to, for example, uh, there's a scene where they're eating lunch, and the little girl says, "I don't want to run track no more." And they're like, "Really? You, what you're good at?" She's like, "But I don't, I don't like track. I don't want to do it no more." Yeah. Then when the tether come and attack them, she runs, and she has to. Yeah, yeah. And the evil version of her like walks outside, watches her run, gives her the head start, stretches, then bolts, catches up to her, passes her, then turns around to fuck with her. Mm -hmm. So that shows you that the girl's pushing down her. Talent. Track talent. Yeah. So her track talent is what's coming back to haunt her. So with that being said, if you're a tethered version of yourself, of all the stuff you try to repress about yourself were to come to try to attack you, who's going to win? You mm. or your tethered? Would That's you survive deep. an attack from your tethered version? That's fucking deep. Yeah. Damn. I don't I'm trying to think what the hell I was suppressed. Yeah, that's that's what I'm yeah. thinking of right there. Like Man. I found a quicker way to think about it. What are the things you don't like about yourself that you try to change? That you mm. have changed? Oh, uh, man. I would say... My level of empathy. Mm. So what you're saying is the tethered version wouldn't have any empathy? Not that he wouldn't have any. Mm. But... But how does, that, like, how does that affect like this motherfucker trying to kill you and you trying to kill it or get away from it? So I'm like, I mean, oh, that's I'm that's. Think. It ain't me doing it to myself. <clears throat> In fairly recent events, I don't put myself first enough. Oh, I put man. myself first, but I don't put myself first enough. So your tether version would put himself first, yeah, more so than you, yeah. So how probably would that, how also mm. continue on? How would that make him great? It, I'm not saying it would make him great. Yeah, would you, would you consider that to be like a a, a hindrance? It's it's, it's certain things. It's certain things that I would sit here and like. You know what? Let me just let me go ahead and bite this bullet. I bite the bullet a lot. I feel what you're saying. And I'll sit here and like, yeah, let me just, let me, yeah, let me let me bite yeah. this bullet and, and give a little bit more than I would, mm. and then I chalk it up to some shit like. So your tether would be selfish, in a sense. It would be like I'm gonna take care. Like, I'm gonna yeah. take care of me because I take because you take care of everybody else and you're looking out for everybody else. Like I'll get the short end. Of the I mean, I mean, to a degree, not not to say that I'm out here like the most unselfish person in the world, but uh -huh. you bite a lot of bullets. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I bite a decent amount of bullets with with a lot of shit that I do, and it's like mm -hmm. you know what, this isn't worth the bullshit that bullshit, it's gonna bring, yeah. and then I chalk it up to shit like karma. I'll get it back. Mm. I'm yeah. I'm putting a positive vibe in. Like I tell people, yeah. Because, like, even at work, I got a lot of people I work with that, like, got a lot of fucked up shit going on. Right. And I tell people all the time, like, yo, I'm in here weed laughing and joking and shit. Yeah, yeah. Y'all have no idea what the fuck I got going on when I clock out. And y'all wouldn't know. And so, it, I mean, it's it's shit like that. Because they always where, talking about them. Oh, just, yeah, and I'll oh, sit there saying, and, and, and like. You're more okay. of the listener. Yeah, I, 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 I'll listen to uh, them. I know, like, I know you know what? Like yeah, that. like like you got this going on, but look, man, don't worry about it. You'll be all right because mm -hmm. this and that is going on. And then, like, it's yo, like, I got this going on, mm -hmm. so, you know, relax. Take it's it like easy. It's like one of those like questions this. that um, 
I've always heard Charlemagne say like, uh, who do the people that you lean on go to? Yeah, your strong yeah, 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 your strong yeah. friends. So check on your strong. Yeah, 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 Basically. yeah. I get that. So you're, oh man, you're tethered. Your tether be driven. Hell yeah. Yeah, he sound like he'd be motivated and driven. Man, I guess. more so relentless. God, yeah. Jesus. More so, because I'm because I am driven. You know what I mean? But like more so relentless. Like, God help. A you, little man. bit more cutthroat. God help you. Man. Mm. Yeah. I don't know about my tether, man. I probably. <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of scary question. Man. <laughs> I ain't gonna make you mess me up with that one, man. Cause I ain't never think about it. Um, I think I I wouldn't want to be the one to like live with regret or like not you know what I'm saying. Kind of like, what's the word like uh not achieving something I could have. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like like you know. So if I if if it's a way I want to go, try to get it, do it or whatever. You know, at least try your hand. I'd rather you know try and not succeed and not try at all. But I don't know. That's about probably one thing I probably like. You know kind of regret like I feel like I could do more I always do more but that's what your tether would be like lazy as a motherfucker yo yes yeah, yeah sloth like a sloth the sloth what's the uh mm, the sloth the sloth sloth yeah like what's the what's the uh daily sin uh yeah I know yeah yeah yeah, yeah, sloth. Sloth. yeah sloth yeah yeah laziness oh man that'd be horrible man oh man 500 pound me man <laughs> <laughs> eating cheesecake and Krispy Kremes and just oh man cakes and pies oh man cakes and pies <laughs> That'd be crazy, man. That that's that's deep. All right, here's another question that uh, related to that one. Let's see if I can ask it right this time. I don't think I asked it right the last time. All right, so uh, think of you right now at mm -hmm. this age at your fullest potential. Like, so you know how like you sometimes you'll sit back and you'll think about mistakes you made in the past, mm -hmm. and you'll be like, damn, if I didn't do that, and I would did this instead of that, then I'd be mm -hmm. fucking here right now. So think of like that version of yourself that would like. Do all the shit you supposed to have done. Everything you planned on doing that you didn't do. Mm. Everything that you supposed to set yourself up with and all that stuff. Think about the version of you that is like the best version of yourself for this age right now. If that wow. if that version of you were wow, to look wow. at you right now, what would he say? The version right which yeah. 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 So the version the uh, basically you from the future. No, no. Now. Oh, like now, like, like an alternate like, version it's of kind of like if I would have known what I knew then. Yeah, it's like, it's like an alternate version, Man. alternate universe version of you right now, but made all the right decisions. Uh, and I got something on that. Gosh. Okay. All right. Where can I start, man? One of the one of the mistakes or one of the things I regret, kind of in the past. Um, I was working at I was working at no uh Newport News ship shipyard been you know my dad's been there for like years I'm talking like over like over thirty plus right years, mm -hmm. so like um this was like two thousand and seven two thousand and seven right I was working over there, um, I was working like eleven to two uh no it was not I mean the two to eleven ship the two right. and the p at two p.m. to eleven at night and it was sucking and at that time I was like you know I was on my grind still um doing the open mic, trying to find myself as an artist, and I was so stubborn and hard-headed, but I was driven and ambitious trying to chase that, that I wasn't looking at, like, long-term, like, career, like, career, career, like, taking care of family, career, and I had quit, man. I never met. I took the tassels off, left, did, you know, quit that job, but from then, I did start having a, I was excelling in the music and all that stuff, like, I had a breakout year, single, um, opening up at Hannah Coliseum, opening up for Wu Tang twice. Like things were taking off. Like I was getting some real traction, like in that. But I was like still working job to job, or I wasn't as stable. You know what I'm saying? Job, I was doing jobs. Like I had like three or four jobs, but it wasn't like a career. They were just jobs. Mm -hmm. So I love the journey of like where, you know, where everything I've been to kind of come back uh, full circle now. But sometimes I look at like, damn, if I would have just stayed and tried to maybe stick it out. I wonder where would I be far as like career wise and everything. Like you I like stick it out at the uh, shipyard. At the shipyard, okay. but I knew that I, I knew I was miserable though. But chasing this, chasing the dream I had at the time, I learned a lot. But I'll never. I love that journey. Like like from being on the road like a little bit with Shorty Low and experiencing all this stuff. It was dope to me. Like though, I I love the journey. Like to even to where I'm at now. Like where I have you know, you know own business. I have my own business. Hey, I man, stay sure I understand what you're so you're saying like you regret a little. I think about it. Something that's one of the mistakes. Now I'm on one of the choices. I say one of the choices I made where it was like. So do you think you would have been able to do the rap thing and the shipyard at the same I time? I don't think so. 
Cause, so, cause this is what, this is what, this is what I to think. me it sounds like you made the right decision. I'm yeah, gonna, I mean, me right, too. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, my wife might at the time, my wife might disagree, <laughs> but I mean, she understand now because I think I was so miserable. I, I look at it like this. So y'all, in y'all were together back there. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. I look at it in retrospect. If I, if I never had made that choice right then, it might have been the wrong, wrong one at the time. But to me, I was so passionate about yo what I wanted to do and what I wanted to excel in that I quit. But then I started winning these competitions and I could build my relationships and my network grew and it was like that's when I started you know getting traction with radio and then like I said everything and so on and so on and opening up in the Hampton Coliseum which is like ain't too many people just doing that's that crazy. locally yeah. you know how we where we came from in high yeah. school it was like so I was like yo I'm glad I yeah, did y'all, y'all was deep in there poster boards and some old shit I remember yeah that. so yeah. I was like yo I'm glad I did I'm glad I did that and I was I, I love the journey and everything and, and even to this day that's the same network of friends and people that I still, you know, deal with. And they use my business. So I built my networking thing off of the music stuff. But sometimes I think about, man, if I would have stayed in that ship, yo, I probably would have been supervised. Or I would, who knows where I would have been, supervisor or whatever. But I felt like that's one of them choices. Like, it could have been left or went right. And I was just wonder about that sometimes, but I feel like I made the right decision. I'm about to say, man, lead I have, lead I have a stable, I have a stable career now. Like everything is good. I'm um, working like three jobs. Things are great, but that's one of them things that kind of like. Ugh. Is it based off of maybe what? stability? That's what you think. Yeah, yeah. About? I think that, it was. I think that's, that's all yeah. that is. Is, is I think it was career stability. stability. Yes, it was stability at the time because you know, like all like striving I mean, like, you know, like, the, you, uh, yeah. the, the more stability you have, the less happiness you have too. So I, I mean, think like, yo, yeah, that is deep. Like that is deep. Complacent. You get real complacent. Ooh, that is deep. Real complacent. That is deep, man. That is deep. So that's just one of the things. That when you said that. But what I tell me, like, what I knew, if I knew what I knew then, looking back now, I'm like, man, you'll be all right. <laughs> you'll go through some stuff, man, but you'll be all right. And, like, you figured it out. You know what I mean? All right. What about you, the best version of yourself? Would it see you right now? What would you say? I don't know, man. I, I, like, and this is one of those things I think about a lot. Because mm-hmm. I never, I never really. Like it, all right, it's one. It's one of those things I think about a lot because I feel like I'm at where I'm supposed to be at, mm-hmm. and I say it all the time. If I could go back and meet little nineteen year old me oh, man. from fucking eleven years ago, I whip his little bitch ass. <laughs> I man, I fuck that dude up, and it's like. There, there, there was a couple. There was a couple points where, like, there was there was a bunch of forks in the road. You know, I was, I was supposed to go in the military. Shit, fuck that. I was supposed to take. I never took my SATs. Oh man, me my, either. my parents wouldn't let me take my SATs. Where they wouldn't. They, they wouldn't oh, give me my money to take my SATs. Oh man. I took my PSATs and I scored high. And when I didn't take my SATs, I remember like guidance counselors and teachers was like pissed off about the shit. Oh, um, because you had scored so high on the PSATs, right? I don't remember what the score was, and I was oh. talking about that shit like <clears throat> it might have been either Friday or Thursday. I was just talking about that. Wow. And, um, you know, like, coming up as a kid, shit wasn't gravy. Yeah. So, like, I had all that to deal with, and it was, like, wondering, you know, if things would have happened different with my parents' situation. You know, I got things like dealing with my, my daughter's mom and shit. Yeah, yeah. And how that could have branched off left to right based on a smarter decision I would have made. And then, I, like, I'll sit there and, like, where I'm at right now mm-hmm. with, like, I got a son and a daughter now. And looking at things the way that they are now mm-hmm. and the person I am now, everything that I've done in the past, I've learned from. Yeah. And so it's hard for me to, like, it's it's a, it's a fucked up route to take. But I'm appreciative of it, and I can understand and respect it. But if I could have known what I know now without going through the hardships oh, of it, tell me about it. it <laughs> you preaching? I'm like, I mean, I, and man. I think I think about this shit a lot. Like, it's it's one of those situations where I'm not mad with who I am right now, but I hate the road that it took for me to get here. Like, I I mm-hmm. wish I would have had someone to show me. Mm-hmm. 
this is what will happen. It didn't have to be this, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't have to be this hard. I mean, like you and can't so, get the juice without squeezing the lemon. Ooh, it's just what it is. Yeah, that's a fact. but see, that's, that's a fact. and that that's one of those things now where like I try to instill in you know my kids. Kids, yeah, yeah. Oh man, where it's like, look, yo, you. Oh man, if you man. fuck this no, we up, just, we done stumbled man, into it. Yo, <laughs> yo, because you tell them like, yo, follow, follow the blueprint. We giving you the blueprint. Do this. Don't do this fucked up shit the mistakes i made you're gonna make a little mistakes but if you can avoid them avoid them mm -hmm. follow the blueprint we're setting for you you'll be fine like even to telling them about credit financial stability yes. to um people will come and go i mean some people you stick around through high school some of the shit that matters to you in high school mm -hmm. it's not gonna matter to you when you get a little older don't be so man i'm telling you like yeah. you're saying the same sh yeah. how, how, how was your um your daughter my daughter be 10 in October. 10, okay. So she's, she's older, nine right older now. than your son? Yeah. Okay, yes. What about, my, my what about you? My daughter's 16. She just turned 16 in Fe uh, February, man. Oh, God damn. And how old's your boy? Man, uh, 11, shit. man. That shit give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> 16. Man. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, this 16, weekend I had the transparency of the conversation. So 16, your man. Kids? Uh, my, mine is uh, uh, nine. Look, he got yeah, scared. Same, man. <laughs> your, your daughter <laughs> nine? Nine and my boy Oh, four. man. It's all good, man. It's cool, man. Man, like my son, 11, like. It's crazy, like he like a little mini me, and you know how they say the stuff you did, you know what I'm saying, or stuff, you know stuff, the crazy stuff you did, you yeah. get back from your kids, they give it to you. Uh -huh. That shit is real, man. Yeah. Like I'm dealing with it my right daughter, now. cool. My daughter, cool. Like she just, she talked a lot. She was a little more mature for her, you know, her age, because she was just a little kid with sense. Mm -hmm. But you know what I'm saying. So she ain't really having a filter. But them girls. It was like it, was, it went from me thinking like I wonder what she's gonna sound like when she starts talking to like man I can't get her to shut up. But, <laughs> but it was but it was dope. Like me and my daughter we we tight man. That's that's my ace and I, I keep it so funky with her that it's like you ain't gonna be able, like I don't want nobody else to bullshit. I like yo this world is not gonna be nice to you. Mm -hmm. So you got it. I, I'm gonna give it to you raw, yes. real. Like I'm inappropriate, but she it's. I guess I gotta give it to her. Cause I mean, like, but is is being real really inappropriate? You know what I'm nah, saying? No, it's not. You know, it's, so it's, it's, like, it's, it's the, the opposite. It's the opposite that's yeah. messing the kids up. Yeah. To, in my opinion, because when you lie, when you kind of lie to them, I mean, you don't want you don't want to lose their innocence, but you kind of give it to them. Like, look, man, like I'm gonna keep it honest with you, but I'm not trying to hurt you. But you gotta know a little bit. You don't want them to lose their innocence, but you don't want to grow up naive and be like, yo, what the hell, like. Nobody. Then get, you get out here. And nobody you get gave me. Up. Yeah, yeah, yo. You sugarcoat their life. Somebody gonna eat them up. That's the fact. That's like a, a fact. Cookie. That's, that's, <laughs> a, that's, that's, that's fact, what it's going to be. That's a fact, man. That's a fact. All yeah. right. So, uh, what are some challenges you guys had to deal with raising the boys that you didn't have to deal with raising the girls? Like, what's it? What's yeah, what's man. What's you want to take that? <sighs> man, man, this goddamn climate, man. It's different. See, my son, young though, man. He uh, he four. He just turned four in oh, January. Yeah, cool, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and that's my little buddy, man. Yeah. But what's some of the differences <laughs> that you four, had? Four is an interesting age. Man. Say, I know you didn't have you done had some shit at four four. Four. Oh man. Nothing I mean nothing crazy. He's he's an asshole. Which is nothing Aww. short than me. Yeah. Just like his daddy. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which is, and I mean, That's don't dope. get it twisted. My daughter an asshole too, but with him, it's like, he could sit there and be doing something, and I'm like, yo, you, this isn't right. Man. And like, the first thing he do, come give me a hug. Like, so it's. Trying I mean, to trying saying, to, like he he fucks up and then goes and show you love before you can get mad. Oh uh, man! Because he knows he's fucking up. He knows he's doing something that I'm not gonna like. It could be yeah. something as simple as when he gets done eating. Like I could sit there and buy him a fucking four for four from Wendy's. He'll eat all the food and shit, and then he just sitting there with the fucking barbecue sauce, just dipping his finger, finger in this shit. Yo, that shit burns me up. <laughs> like, put that, throw that shit away, man. Like, there, bro. Like, what are you doing? Put the food away. Shit is nasty. It's germs, man. <laughs> and you're gonna mess up my back seat, yo. Something as simple as that. What the hell did you put on the nuggets? Like, yo. <laughs> yo, I, man, I'm with you on that one, man. It is I, I feel you as on simple that. as that. Oh, you just hear a bunch of smacking out the back seat? Like, what the hell? Oh, he's just dipping man. his fingers. Dipping his damn like yo, what are you doing, man? Like he tried to he tried to come at me yesterday. We um I went to cookout. Uh -huh. Bought him some food. I bought him I bought him some nuggets and fries and shit. I gave him the fries because I'm not 
I won't go give him the nuggets. Yeah, yeah. Dry, him just dry as a bitch. So I won't go give him the nuggets without <laughs> the barbecue out. sauce. Yeah, like he was going to drop them shits. So I was like, yo, take these fries, eat a couple of them. He was already tired. He yeah. fall asleep. He might have ate like one or two fries. Had the whole shit. So I took them shits, threw them back in the bag, blah, blah, tied the shit up. Yeah. We get to the crib. I wake him up. He's sitting there. He tried to spaz on me. Daddy, where my fries at? I'm like, bro, they in the bag. And, like, he tried to really, like, come at me and shit. And I'm like, yo, calm down. We good. Yeah. And so, you know, point being. You kind of got to keep them in their place. But they don't know yeah, be like. I know, I know what you mean. That's the little boy, man. <clears> and, and, and you can't be, be mad at yeah. it. Cause I'm, cause he like, swell up on you a little bit because he, yeah, he, 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 he tried to down. I yeah. always, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Because, like, when I park, you know, I turn around. I got him in, in the passenger side. Yeah, yeah. Seat, so I unbuckle him and shit because uh -huh. he can't do that yet. He tried to hop over where my fries at. And he was knocked out. So he wake up. That's the first thing he said. I'm like, yo, calm down. You good. First off, yes. You're welcome. Getting you home, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he tried to jump over the joint. Yeah, where my fries at? Uh -huh. And I'm like, yo, wait. Like, I unbuckled you, but wait. Yeah. Let me go there and grab uh -huh. everything. We get out the seat. So then he's like, just randomly run up. Daddy, I love you. Hug me. Just, love you too. I, I, you can't say nothing, but I love you too. Yeah. Little punk <clears throat> man, so I remember, my son, man, I was and like, you gotta. I was like, look, man, I'm Mufasa. You Simba, man. Like, yo, you. I gotta, you know, I gotta keep you in place because. Well, I ain't trying to get trampled, but. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I, I know it's messed up. I, he'll, he'll understand it. I guess I think he's seen the Lion King, but it's like, yo, I, I'm running the thing. I'm the king. You the prince, man. Just chill, you know. You know what I'm saying? Got to keep keep him. You know what I'm saying? Kind of. Not let them get too big. You, you know said what I mean? You're just 11, though, right? 11, man. It's Man, we've been man. crazy stuff like. I couldn't imagine. Oh, man. Right, where I start, man? With, with this little dude, the challenges I say in this time with all this crazy shit, with like, you know, police brutalities and stuff, it's mm -hmm. kind of challenging raising a young black man. And it's like, he go to like, it's not private school, but it's like, it's it's a little bit of everybody mixed. It's a, you know, a mixed bag. It's very, you know, um, diverse. But it's like you got to be on a list to get into school. Mm -hmm. So he getting it, but it's pu it's like public, but it's a private public. Like everybody just can't go. So it's like he learning his social skills and everything. It's crazy, but it's like I kind of trying to tell him like, yo, um, you know, be proud of who you are, be careful. But this is this is what you got to go through. So it's hard, challenging, trying to tell him like, don't be scared of the world, but be ready for the world. So it's um, raising a young black man nowadays. It's kind of like, man, you can't sugarcoat shit. It's like you you can't and it's kind of scary. I tell him all the time like recently he just got access right because I be on him like he be goofing around in class and shit like that. His teacher called me and this time she was like oh, he threw a stick and he hit a little girl. He said he didn't mean to but he got she, she got a little mad. So you did mean to. He threw a stick and hit the little girl and the only thing I think about like damn man we don't we don't condone that. I tell you that even with your sister. So put a pin in that. Cause I'm thinking about some crazy shit I did when I was in elementary school. I saw it on TV. I did it. I pulled a girl bra strap. I got in so much trouble, but I didn't know the like, oh, the you know the ramifications of that. Like it was, mm -hmm. I was like, yo, that's sexual harassment. If you was like, if you weren't in the fourth grade when y'all did when I did that, y'all would have been. I was already in trouble, but I didn't. You know, I saw it on TV. Shit, I did it. Got in trouble. So when he did, I said, oh man, please, let me hit this little girl to stick. He did. He had I he had ISS in school suspension for that, and I know that sucks already. So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna whoop his ass. You know, I, you know, one time I can't shake him. I'm tired to do. I said, you know what? Took him out to the court. I thought he, you know, he was gonna be cool, cause I was too tired by the time I got home to wake him up out of sleep and kind of like, you know, scare him. But I said, alright, we can get out of school. You got the ball. Put your ball and stuff on. We're going to the court. He hyped. He said, I get the ball out of the trunk. I said, no, I got it. He said, we go to the court. So you see that all the way around this court? Run till I tell you stop. Just made him run, man. You talking about somebody exhausted by the time we finish. I'm out there hooping. I'm for at least an hour, 90 minutes. I'm out there hooping. Having my little funk in my workout. He just running. I see him watch. Yo, run. He running some more. Just man, by the time by the time we walk back to the car, he is crying. Mm -hmm. Snot nose, exhausted. After he took that shower, man, ate, he was out. He 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 was I so mean, like exhausted. you did at least tell him, hey, you know why I made you. Oh, run. yeah, I did, oh, of course. By the time we got in the car, I said, yo, so every time you want to get in, in trouble in school. Just think about this. I'm gonna bring you back out here and I'm gonna run you. I said, I ain't even gonna whoop your tail. I ain't even gonna do all that. You just gonna run. And he he was like, man, I'm done with this. He said, cause he overslept that morning. That's how tired he was. So it's like, 
I'm trying to find new methods. I had mothers inboxing me when I put it, you know, put it on social media. It's like, yo, take my boy out there next time. Yo, I need you. <laughs> I said, I got you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to find new methods, but it's kind of like teaching a young, young, a young black man or any young man. Cause I feel like, man, you do anything. Yeah, yeah, in school now. If this shit was like you a little older, even 14 or 15. I'm about to say they trying to kids as adults now. Tamir so, Rice got propped at 12. That's crazy. That's what no I'm saying. No questions say, asked. That's why I'm, I said, yo. Son. I said, yo, you do not want to go to jail. Because I think about what scared me. I seen Oz. I said, yo, they raping dudes yeah, in jail. Yeah. You don't want to <laughs> go there. I said, bro, stay yeah. out of trouble. If you, if you can avoid trouble, avoid it. And just try to make the right decisions. It ain't always easy. But think about that shit. I never wanted to go to jail. I seen Oz. I said, oh, hell no. I'm good. I mean, I still got my fair share of little bullshit. But I was like, I don't want to get in no trouble. I don't want to go to jail, bro. With? So. Well, what kept me out of jail was I was like, a, I'm addicted to freedom. I was just like doing whatever the fuck I, I want to do. That's a, that's a good way of putting it. Do. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck you, freedom. I ain't trying to um, do years of you got something, right? no pussy. Oh, yeah. I said my PC last joint, but um, I pretty much, I just, <clears throat> I told him the difference between my girl and the boy was more so in like the energy level. Oh. Like I uh, know he got, he has a different energy level. Like when he does something like, like I say, for instance, he'll, he'll jump before he go look. Uh, Whenever oh, he sees something, he'll, he'll go before he go looking at mm -hmm. it. Like with my daughter, she'll study it and she might be timid <laughs> to go do mm -hmm. it. But she's watching it, she's enjoying it. She, she, you can see she wants to, but then it's like, eh. so cautious. I might gotta give her a, a nudge, uh -huh. like go do it. You got it. Him? Oh, I like that. Boom, he do it. <laughs> he do it right. He do it right that first time. I can't get him to change it. Mm. So now it's like shit. Now you stuck in your ways because mm -hmm. you yeah. did it right the first time, and now you just like, oh, that's. That's it. Wonder I'm who we get that from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and keep going. So now, you know, with our boys being so young, I'm trying to figure out how, how to tune it because I don't know how to, um, how to get them to to relearn or, or yeah, to teach yeah, him yeah. further into it yet. Cause with him being so young, but and that was the only thing I had was the energy level just different with everything. Hey, can I ask y'all yeah. something real fast? Uh, so, uh, do the boys act differently around uncles and aunts? Yes. Um, Mine. Yeah. Because it's like, I be hearing people talk about Women. their kids, and I'm like, you know what? I never seen this shit with any of my with my nieces or nephews. I be having none of these problems. Like, I can't think of one problem I have with any of them niggas. Like, yeah, you ever. get the ones that you run over, and then you get the ones that you respect to death. Uh-huh. And that's the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, my son, he's like anti... I ain't say anti-social, but it take him a while to warm up to everybody for a while. All the uncles are like, man, yeah, Jacob just don't talk to anybody. You get used to it. He just don't talk. He's, he will feel you out. And after a while, he start talking about Fortnite or any video game. Yeah, he opened oh, up. He talking okay. there. But that's my daughter, social butterfly. I can't stop her from talking in school. Like, yo, gotta shut up. <laughs> 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 like, but but like she completely opposite. Social butterfly, whatever. My son, he he a people person now. But early on, he kind of like, man, if I rock with you, I rock with you. If not, I'm being quiet. Wow, I ain't got man. nothing to say. But so it's. Is a difference. That's he got. He got. He got his favorite. He got his favorite uncles. Like, like his one uncle play video games. They 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 tight. They over. He over there now. He, he cool. He, he so. All right. Uh, so, any uh, generational curses mm. the uh, you're deciding to break with uh, with your son? Anything that was passed down from your pops to you, like bad habits oh, or anything? Man. You're trying to make sure that they don't. Or your mom develop. dukes to you. Yeah, that you're yeah, trying yeah. to break. Man. I'll let you go. You know I mean? Nah, man, y'all go first. I mean, I oh, feel I, like I my <laughs> you go ahead. Okay, I can. Okay, okay, I go, yeah, I go yeah, first. Like, I go first. Cause Cause I got mine. Because I, I, like I said, I said, um, uh, fear success. Mm. Like that runs rampant through my 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 family. It's a fear success. Everybody talks about what they would do, dreams and mm -hmm. everything else, and they start with the footsteps, they're going towards it, and then they talk theirself out of it. Oh, man. Like. And backtrack, and then like, ah, you know, uh, this that, mm -hmm. and find a reason to say, boom, it's for like it, to justify, it, yeah, to justify saying. the hell out of the failure, yeah, or the 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 lack of trying. And so I'm just trying to break that with my kids. I'm trying to show them things and show them persistency. And and I have a real big issue with complacency to the point where it, I don't know if I'm weighing it out right or not. If I'm being too hard on it or not. Cause I don't let my daughter. My daughter says she want to do something. Are right, you going to do it? 
Like we yeah, going, yeah, you, yeah. we going a hundred percent at this. That's right. Like That's even if you don't know what a hundred percent is. We going hundred percent at this. It ain't gonna be no lack of daisy or nothing. It ain't gonna be no no half ass step in this shit. You wanna do it like dancing? She does dance. Yeah, same here. You going? We are going all the way. Mm-hmm. We gonna do stuff that you ain't even had no clue. You knew what you gonna do. That's you right. tapping? Yes. And they need that. They yeah, need that. they need that. Yeah, yeah. Just throw throw in the water and 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 make sure she know. Look, if you want to continue doing, cause she see hip hop. Yeah, yeah. You want to continue doing what you want to do. You gotta do what, what you, you need, need to do. do. Yeah, period like point that's blank fact, so fact. school is a job mm-hmm. like yo you want things how you doing on your job let me see your let me yeah. see your your pay stub which is your damn handle report your, card. your business first mm-hmm. all right because then then you can get everything you want i ain't gonna tell you no with nothing long as you're doing what you're supposed to do that's a fact Same period point blank. but Same i don't know if i'm being too hard nah nah you gotta but, stay on them like that man because then they because then they know that's the standard but then also you know oh. the saying when you run from something so hard you end up running uh, dead into it, and that's 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 my only that's my only thing with it. I see that. we conflicted with it. I say find a balance. Yeah, um, I'm, damn. That was the question again. Cause I got lost there. Uh, generational curse is something that was being Man, passed down hereditary. And, yeah. I say, on my end, it, well, I didn't say it's necessarily a generational curse, but I don't want my kids to be in debt or learn more about. I always felt like. That counts. I felt I felt like my parents could have taught me more as far as like financial, like you know what I'm saying, like yes. like my my dad kind of explained credit to me, but he didn't ex- like break it down like where it mattered. Mm-hmm. Now my daughter is getting into like want to use debit cards and understand finances. And, yo, me and her mom are on it. Like yo, you need to understand it like this because this is how you're going to survive. This is how you get a loan. This and that. So I would say. Finance, finance is teaching them that, like, yo, this shit is important. This is why you need it. Do this, do that, cause um, like my mom, okay, she she gamble, but she she loves bingo. I never, I'm not a big gambler. Like my dad, he used to drink. He don't drink anymore, but I was never into those two things. Like that, that I'm glad that was never just my thing. That never was my thing, but I know the finances thing, like that. You don't want to be in debt or as little as possible, if none. Cause you know what I'm saying, kids go to college and all this stuff. That's a whole nother. Yeah, buddy. that's a whole nother s- subject to me. Cause I feel like college is some kind of a scam, but it's not. It's needed, but it's like I don't know. I don't know where it's going to be in a couple of years. Kind we of like, still learning this. this yeah, because right I'm trying to think. It's like, hard yo, to teach what we're kind of still learning. Yeah, right now. yeah, yeah. But uh, I'll say that, man. Just uh, financial mm-hmm. stability, yo. It's important. You better get it. Hold on to it and learn that shit. Like that's why. That's my thing, and man. it ain't that hard. It ain't that it's hard. It's not yeah. that hard. Yeah. I feel like first and foremost, I feel, I feel like I'm lucky enough to goddamn have a close friend of mine that has his kids the same age as mine. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. So, cause like I can I can see a lot of shit like with yours, cause both your kids are like. A month older than both mine, yeah. mm-hmm. and they like your daughter's a month older than my daughter. Your son's a month older than my son, mm-hmm. so it's like I I feel like that gives me like a glimpse into the future type shit. Like, oh shit, top doing this, and let me goddamn get ready to goddamn do my son doing that same shit. But um, towards the I mean, I was it towards the mic? You were get you you like this? Oh. But I mean, like, for the most part, man, I feel like I feel like I can teach my son certain things for him to actually get mm-hmm. because of the fact that his mom gets it too, and so I have a little bit more of a struggle trying to put this shit together with my daughter's mom because she's not in the same thought process as me. So these are things that I got to deal with when it comes to that. But I don't know, man. Is it... So what you're not trying to pass on to your kids or what you're trying to do? What your people had, what you're not trying to pass on? Like, I mean, with with my son is... It seems like he's eager to get it. Mm-hmm. And I, I have the things that I know, like, I don't speak to my dad. Because he didn't teach me anything when it comes to 
being a man, being a father, any of that shit. So that's the shit you're trying to uh, break. So you want to teach him everything you weren't taught? The tools he need. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like I I understand what to do there because it's like okay, well I had to deal with this. This is something that my dad should have taught me, but he didn't. So boom, now I know to do this. When it comes to my daughter, it's like. It's it's almost like playing open field, but it's like, okay, her mom puts enough shit on my plate for me to be like, so you, you know feel I mean? like you're not going to be able to break the generational curse on that end because you're fighting. No, not that I won't be able to break that generational curse. It'll... Or just you don't feel like you have enough control to. Yeah. I think. All right. What I believe when it comes to my daughter, I believe it'll be one of those things where. She'll either listen to me or learn the hard way a couple of times before she realizes oh, the motherfucker might be on to something. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't even want to risk that. <laughs> but yeah, I, it's, I, it's not I, something, I, it's I, it's not something it's, I wanted. It's kind of how, I, like you said, it's how we learn, but they don't necessarily want our kids to learn or our nieces or our nephews yeah. to learn. It's, yeah. I feel you, man. Because we like, all know that girl that, uh, yeah. Learned, yeah. that learned the hard yeah. way. Yeah. And that's. Yeah. That's that's one of them things I, I'm 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 gonna have to no, gear up man. for that battle over there, mm-hmm. and it's that's worth the fight. See, though, it's, man, it's worth the fight. It's kind of cool though. Like when my daughter being sixteen, that's like I didn't kind of set the foundation. Me and her mother, like, and she got a strong support system of women. Like they alpha women in her family. That shit is like soul food for real. Like so, she she got a good like core. But I keep it real with her. Like yo, just. I feel like I did a good job with her. And father's a strong foundation, head on the shoulders. Now it's like with my son. I know everybody says it's a double standard, but it is. Like it is. daughter, man. it's like, cool. You want to keep uh, keep sticks away from her, all the poles away from her. Your son, you want to make sure he doesn't jump into the wrong hole, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Y'all feel what I'm saying? It's like, mm-hmm. chill, dude. Like, oh, my God. My dad, my dad kept it real with me. Like, about, you know, certain stuff. Don't do this, do this. You get burnt or whatever. You don't want to do that. My son... My talk for my dad was he what was he was lifting weights, <laughs> and I walked into the uh-huh. garage and sat down, and then he was just like, "Hey, don't love them hoes." I was like, "All right, <laughs> spot me, nigga." Yeah, <laughs> we'll see some new shit. Rack, uh, rack em. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some <new> shit. <laughs> Yo, put in a twenty-five. Yo, yeah. put a twenty-five. But yeah, man, I mean, ah, uh, that I mean that's different. Like with, with your your daughters, you want to try to keep them on the keep them on the right path and. Like, look, because you can't do nothing about it. You just want to make, like my parents told me, you, oh, you, I'm not going to be there when you do it, but I want to make sure you have to make the right decisions when you do and be smart about it. All I can do is tell you. Yo, God, man, I keep it funky. Like, See, I, okay, I got a quick uh-huh. thing with your daughter. Yeah. So with your daughter being older, because I, I, I ain't going to bullshit you. I'm scared yeah. to damn death. Man, man you, I got you. Yeah. I, I was, I was scared. Scared. six. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm scared still scared. scared. I mean, I'm, I'm easier death, now. Bro. I'm cool now because... We'll be saying everybody I, got a dad. Everybody yeah, got that. Yeah. Dude. I mean it's cool now. It's, it's cool now. Like I mean, you, you, cool. you you getting into the boy lanes and all mm-hmm. that other shit. Okay, but um Prom this year or next year? Uh two more two, years. Two, two, years. Yeah, two, two more years. Yeah, two more years. Two more years. Yeah. Um the thing is, how do you cause I like yeah, like you said, you talk to her and you talk to her yeah. real. How do you balance the fact that you go hard with her? Like you build her up um, hard. Cause no matter what, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like you can just go to her and be like it's like this. She can say yeah. why this, that, and the third. But if you go to your boy like that, yeah, are you nervous about building uh, him up to that Superman status too quick? Nah, it's dip- well with him being eleven. He don't even. We joke about him like, girl. I know was one girl on the bus. He was he was interested and he liked her. He like he thought she was cute. I joke about around with him, you know, about the Valentine's about candy, and I teach him the difference between she like you cool. But don't let her use you. She was getting all his snacks every day. Mm-hmm. He was going in his piggy bank getting money. I said, nah, man. Mm-hmm. Look, stop doing that and then see if she still like you. If she don't come to you and try to be nice to you after you don't have no snacks or nothing else extra to get her, she ain't the one. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of put them lessons into yeah. him like that early on. Mm-hmm. But with my June. daughter, it was more it was more like not hard edge, but we already had built that bond because she was so little and I had her with me all, you know, Growing with us, kind of, we already had a rapport. Mm-hmm. So I'm like honest with her about it. And she asked me, and I felt like I owed it to her not to lie to her and keep her funky about everything. 
Like even then she asked me. She asked her mom. She was like, Dad, yeah, I heard you was a thought in high school. I said, No, I yeah, wasn't a thought. I mean, Damn. Back, I said back, did, I said no. Where did she hear such things? I said no. Back then it was just like I was just being a young man in high school, I in, in middle school. It was just exploring. Figure figuring things out. I said I don't I was a kind of thought. We didn't have thoughts back then. Mm, it was just I figuring I said, I said I was figuring <laughs> I said I was figuring things out. Oh, but so I said, who told her you was thought? Man, she asked her mom, told her, and I kept it funky with her about certain things. But it gave us that foundation right there. Like, baby, I know I'm experienced, and it's like I could tell you. I, I feel like experience experience is the best teacher. So I keep it real with her about certain things. Like, but she feel like I'm not. Like, man, you don't know. Oh, you ain't. You know, I say you ain't never been there. It's like, no, I've been there. Some crazy stuff. I can tell you some stories, crazy shit, but. You will love me and respect me. So she be like, all right. Well, he didn't lie to me. He didn't bullshit me. I think yeah. they take that back with them. It's like, we're never going to get the full gist or gratification till they're older, man. Till like 21, they be like, man, damn, they was really trying to tell me the right thing. Mm-hmm. When they 18 even, yeah. like, damn, they was really trying to, like we do with our, 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 our parents or anybody was trying to tell us like, Yo, yeah. just keep us on the right path. Do this, this way. I'm like, damn, I should listen to them. But I appreciate y'all now because mm-hmm. I know when I'm older and I'm more mature to seeing like these life shit, y'all was just trying to guide me in the right direction. So I appreciate y'all. We're not going to get that from them. You might get a couple instances where they come to you like that, and that's cool. My daughter does sometimes. Yeah. But it's like they're not going to get the full gist of it until they're like 18, 21, and they're like, man, I'm out here on my own. This shit is hard. <laughs> so that's I like, man. You owe it to them to kind of keep it real with them and build them up at the same time. Yeah. That's how I look at it, man. All right. Uh, last question. So uh, have you ever felt guilty for bringing kids into this fucked up racist world? Oh, man. Yeah. It's messed up out here, man. <laughs> it's, it's messed up, man. So like what? And what, how old were they when you started feeling guilty? Mm. Like, damn, I really brought him out, this motherfucker. All right, so my answer was I didn't feel guilty when I had my daughter because yeah. the climate won't like this in, 2000, yeah. what, in 2009. The climate won't like this. We were, we were kind of right there at the, the, the end of the – Oh, man. The, we was in the midst of Barack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every, all the, Recession all, just all, dropped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the stuff going on overseas still. Mm-hmm. It was still kind of us versus them. Yeah. Like USA versus everybody else type shit. Some of that US pride was still right, on the high. Right, I, right, I right, right. We were still in the in the we was on the last leg of it though, but we were still yeah. in the 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 cusp of that. And so but with my boy, shit, man. Some of the stuff we got away with, they ain't even, yeah. Some of the stuff that we didn't know was wrong that yeah, that'll get like, yeah, you yeah, yeah. locked the fuck up at fourteen now. Cause like he he, he talking about yeah. like popping a girl um yeah, bra, strap, bra man. strap man like man I actually I, mean, <laughs> I can't even say this but I hit a girl with a goddamn center block throwing fucking rocks. Woo, this is the toughest nigga on Damn, bro. Man, earth. Listen to me, it was a piece. Like, it, was it, was a piece. <laughs> it was a piece. It was a piece of block. Okay, okay. It was a piece. It was a piece. We was at we was at the baseball games. It was at the baseball games over there behind um. In front of Deep Creek High, yeah, yeah, whatever that little play park where all the baseball games used to be. Oh yeah, okay, okay, Deep Creek Elementary, yeah, yeah. And threw the jank and hit the girl. Yeah, I had to oh. throw it with two hands. That's exactly that's the truth. No, <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> but yeah, and so, but I couldn't imagine this shit. But now. why'd you? But why'd you throw the the piece? We, was, we were throwing ball. rocks at each other. Old man came over there and was like, "Yo, nigga, stop!" I was, all right, <laughs> the last one, <laughs> and that jank clinked her dead in her head, knocked her out. Boom. Damn, dude, and but that should have got me locked up. Like, I mean, would it? You know what I'm saying? Oh, my yeah, dad yeah, yeah, beat yeah. my ass out there. That would have now he'd be in jail. Mm-hmm. They would have took me and my sister. Got a similar story. They would have. Could you imagine now? Could you imagine nigga like me growing up in the system? Oh man, this is fucked up, bro. Yeah, you want the system? <laughs> bro. This shit would have been fucked <laughs> up. So, what's your story, man? Almost. Similar, I've been there, man. That's why I can't. I appreciate my dad. I had a, we were playing the water. It was a water gun fight, water balloons. I grabbed a watermelon rind and threw it at this girl. It had water in it, but I threw it at her, knocked out her tooth. Woo. She was crying, 
man. So much violence everything against was, women. No, but we were kids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kids. didn't know. I mean, yeah. we were kids, man. They out there playing with us. We think we they playing like you know. Dude, it was a watermelon rind filled with water, like it was like you know broken off. But I threw it, and that I threw it hard, like it splashed water on it. But it, it broke her tooth. I mean, it knocked it out. She was crying. Everything was fine. I thought everything was fine. Dad caught wind of it, came back there, whooped my ass at that party. I was like, whoo! Mm -hmm. Never forget it. I said, okay. And now we follow each other on IG, so we're cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're cool. You know what I'm saying? But that's one of the moments like, man, okay. I got to be careful how I play with women, girls, or anything like that. Like, all right. Yeah. When somebody tell me stop, I might not see the reason why. But, ooh, that was that was a good one. Yeah, I'm just, we just that, throwing rocks. Could you imagine bro? that now? With social media now and that getting caught? That's what I'm one saying. Of situations? That's bro, what I'm saying. Bro. My old man be in jail for real, for real, bro. That's crazy. For real, for real. Shit. Like, dude, man. <laughs> yeah. I this this world is sure. far as a racist. How you feel about it? I mean, with race, I ain't feel guilty. Just I man, this world is crazy. We just got we just gotta do our best job to get them prepared for it, man. Cause you think about the first time you ever knew about race growing up, us like uh, our young minds growing up. I was pretty. Uh, I was always aware of race. I wasn't. You know, yeah, I wasn't one of the you, kids that had to. You, like, I was. Was you out here the whole time? Yo, you you been out chessing? Chessing? Yeah. Well, no. Nah, I, I mean, I moved to Norfolk in like. 15, 17 years ago, but parents still live. No, I'm talking about when you were growing oh, up. Oh, yeah, 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 the whole time. Oh, yeah, the way we were at, back there, yeah. yeah that's okay, I'll kinda... put it like that, yeah, okay. But I'm talking, yeah, because you know what? I went to Decree Elementary, Ooh. and this was one time I first heard the N-word is when they said uh, the Batman joke, uh, Batmobile or something, something. Broke his wheel. Broke his wheel. Granny p pulled the trigger and shot a nigga or something. It was some nursery rhyme. I ain't heard that version. No, that one. No, it was, yeah. uh, it was like Mad 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 it, was, it was some nursery rhyme. Like <laughs> that sounded like the um, Granny something. The Christmas like, song flip. Some Christmas yeah. song flip. Wait, granny yeah. and nigger. God. Yeah, lady. and I came home and it said it, and my mom and my dad were like, just <gasps> flabbergasted. Like what the f like? Where'd you hear that, man? And I told them I was like, shit. I heard the song at school. Sounded hot. Like you know, I was a little kid. I was like. Kindergarten, I heard it, and I repeated it. You yeah, know, you being, in, was on some shit. being impressionable. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you come back at home, you see, and then that's kind of like, oh shit! All right, this world is serious. So it's something different. Cause I mean, I grew up around you know a mixed, diverse lot of people. I knew, I mean, I knew I was black. I knew they was white, but other than that, I ain't. That was nothing big. Nothing. No. No. You know what I'm saying? Nothing really big. Yeah, see, my thing is, uh, shit. I always notice patterns. So I was like, mm -hmm. when I was, I was like four years old, I used to play like Tetris, like by uh -huh. myself at four and kill that shit. Cause it's just like, yeah, I'm yeah. like good with patterns and stuff and, and puzzles. Yeah. So that's where a lot of me noticing things about race came from. Like by the time I was like six years old, I started realizing, yeah. I like noticing a pattern of, they talk to the white kids like this, why they talk to us like this? And mm -hmm. so I'm looking around like, hey man, what the fuck? Hey, how come, how come, nah, I like why that. is this, why is this like that? Why is this like that? And you know, just like a whole bunch of other stuff. So I was always like aware of it. This is like a... Like my earliest memory of dealing with something racist, even though it took me like a couple of years to realize it was racist, is like when I was five or six years old, going to the school book fair, and uh, tried to buy a book, and the white lady wouldn't sell me the book. Wow, what book was it? Some book. I don't oh know. It was, man! So I, I tried to buy a book, and she wouldn't sell it to me. And I'm like looking at her like, why can't I buy this book? And her response to me was because you can't read. Damn. Yeah, and I was just like, you were a kid. Yeah, I'm a kid. Shit. And I was like, yes, oh, I shit. can read. And she was like, she so she made me open up the book and read the book to her before she would sell it to me. Yo, and, after and the I, library was our thing, you know. Yeah. That was like our social media back then. Yeah. Like, yeah. And uh, damn, after I read it to her, it's like she got mad and sold me the book. But it was like I felt like I had did something mm -hmm. bad from the way she was talking. Because you know, all you know is your parents tell you listen to the grown ups, and the grown ups mm -hmm. tell me I can't read, read. but I can yeah. read. And it's like, yeah. am I being bad for reading? Uh -oh. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? This and I really like I really remember walking. I remember walking back Shit, to the classroom wow. feeling like I done did something wrong with this book, like. I don't know. Am I supposed to have this? Yeah. And that'll mess yeah. the kid up because you're thinking like, damn, maybe mm -hmm. I'm supposed to dumb it down. Mm -hmm. So, question: When did, did you did you, what middle school you went to? I went to I went to I went to Deep Creek Middle. This is before, right when it was building the Hugo. Okay. So I went from '97. That was the year they were building it. Then where I was zoned at, where we was zoned at, right on, on Camelot Boulevard or over there by Janice Lane and all that. You then I had to go to Hugo. Hugo. Okay. So then, in '98, I went to Hugo, and then you know that's crazy because we right, we right, right there, there, yeah, we right, right there. Yeah, but my our school was majority black. That's crazy. So I ain't started really yeah. experiencing white folk until 
For we real? got the Hugo. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah you go way back there. Yeah, that's where y'all Camelot motherfuckers went to Hugo. That shit is weird as hell. Right. It's but weird because hey, the way, the way they there, zoned man. it, that's what everybody, boom, y'all going over here. And it was like people that stayed like no, Chesapeake townhouses and yeah. everything else. They were yeah, going, they were going right to Deep Creek. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I think they did it because I went to Deep Creek Middle and uh, Deep Creek Middle is small as shit. So I yeah. think that's why they did it. It like, was. Camelot had so many fucking kids. Chesapeake was growing. We didn't realize it, but you had... Um, Everything back off a shipyard was coming up. Yeah, so yeah, all yeah. the the marsh creeks and all that stuff mm-hmm. was coming up. But yeah, I just wanted because so was that a culture shock for you? I mean, uh, no, nah, I love man. I hated ninety seven. I hated my seventh grade year. Mm-hmm. I'll get into that, but I love ninety eight. I loved it. Um, one of the other stories my father I wanted to get back into about the race was um when I've noticed that not a pattern, but when my aunts I had took a trip to Cincinnati. Um, I have an aunt in Cincinnati. Shout out to High Tech. Yeah, and um, I wanted a Michael Max shirt. Uh-huh. And I think the shirt was out, and my mom, my dad, and my aunt were all like, uh, you know how you go to a graphic a graphic uh, design mm-hmm. shirt? And you said, oh, I want that one. I see all my hip-hop guys. I, I like rocking it. Yeah. I want that one. And it's around the time, you know, Professor X and um, Native Tongues, and everybody's rocking it. So I, I want that one. And they were kind of like, nah. They were like, they were like, not they were more like precautious, cause it was more like they had to break down. You know who Michael Max? Is? I said, well, I know. My, I mean, you know what the X stands for? I said, it was Michael X, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. I knew a little bit about him. Right, right. I, I, did, I think at that time the Spike Lee movie wasn't out then, but they broke it down. My parents broke it down, and my aunt was like, not in no way like they were trying to deter me for it, but they was more like, I think they were more scared for a kid to be rock around, walk around wearing a Michael Max shirt when it's more like he's about. By any means necessary, a power, and it kind of makes white people nervous. Now, or any other race, I don't want to say just white people. Any n- nerd, white, white ma- people. Ma- it makes you feel like you're white people. white people. It makes you feel like you're a rebel. You know what I'm saying? Or you're disruptive or something. So I think they were more scared of what message they might send. But that opened my eyes to like, all right, what the fuck is the big deal about yeah. this? So I look more into it, and that kind of opened my eyes. I mean, it's more. That's my aunt. Thank, thank God for my aunt. Cause I love her. Cause any source magazine I wanted, she was like, "If you want to read, you buy it for him. If he want to, whatever he wants, you buy it." So I got a shitload of double XLs and source magazines because of her. But she made me like, "All right, I'll get you that shirt if you can go back and read and tell me, you know, about them yeah. and all this." So I had to go back and deep. But that was one of them things that opened my eyes to race being a little older. Like, oh, right. oh shit, it's a little different out here. Like, you know what I'm saying? And the more I kind of feel like movies didn't raise me, but they gave me. A outlet to watch everything like do the right thing and shit jungle fever even then when i wasn't really supposed to be watching it learning how you learn oh my god yo but it was like okay hey when the last time you seen how you learning it's been a while while. you should watch it again as an adult it looks totally different really remy doesn't seem like he's that bad Mm. no he 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 was confused yeah exactly he was was, was trying to find identity he was trying to find identity and he got he got run yeah they pushed him towards yeah that's why um it's dope, man. Like, shout out to my pops, man. I appreciate him because the first real hood movie, to me, my coming to age movie was Juice. I think it was either Juice. I watched Juice. I can't. I gotta look at the IMDb and see what year it came out. But I think Boys in the Hood came out first because it was like ninety two. So 91. basically, what you're saying is your parents did the right thing and not not letting you watch rated R movies and shit when you was a kid. They did though. But I appreciated it though because because okay. um. And because like, I was, Boy, I, I was seeing everything. I'm about to say we out, seen but, boys because yeah. by the time yeah. we was of age of boys in the hood, dude, it probably been out a couple years. Before, probably, yeah, before well, you, I, I think I, I, I think I seen as soon as it hit VHS. Me and my dad, I remember we sat down in the living room and watched Boys in the Hood, and that kind of opened my eyes to like, oh shit, like, all right, I gotta watch out, like, from these so-called friends and these mm-hmm. choices, mm-hmm. shit like that. And I think the other movie, those two movies, those two mm-hmm. movies kind of shaped like. Mm-hmm. All right, I need to be aware of what's really going on. Here. Juice and Boys in the Hood, like, cause those were like. I know Juice had to fuck you up. Yeah, yeah. Juice was crazy, cause um, I feel like I identified with Trey, so I was like, I was you know suburban dude. I ain't really want no shit, like you know I was I wasn't no street dude. And then you had an um Juice. I like Q. Q was just all about the music, so it was kind of like those two things shaped my eyes to like watch this world, how they perceive you, and. It's crazy. See, yeah, with me, it was a lot of just real life experience. I'm talking about like seven years old, went to the store with my cousins and uh. picked up a Milky Way just to look at it to see, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Milky Way. 
And I picked it up and I just hear somebody screaming. I'm like, somebody's getting yelled at. And I looked and it was like the lady was yelling at me. Damn. She was like, you gonna buy that? You gonna buy that? You gonna buy that? Do you buy? Shit. You buy? And I was like, what the fuck going on? So I'm looking like, I'm confused. Like, this bitch talking to me? Yeah, Damn. I'm like seven. <laughs> like, she talking to me? What the fuck going on? Then um, my cousin, yeah. like, when it was with me, he like Still. took it and then put it back and we walked out. And uh, they was and then like nobody mentioned it like yeah. it was just, so to me it was just like this bizarre shit that just happened and like nobody and, like some Twilight shit like mm-hmm. like Twilight mm-hmm. Zone like yeah what's going on what's going on here yeah you know what I'm saying shit like that so damn lot, lots and lots of stuff so that's wild how about yeah. you any culture shocks mm. another, another thing that I know is like, I don't know, man. I'm not I'm not special in the fact that like I'm the only one that was going through shit but I've noticed is that I'm the only one that was noticing it. As a child, early, yeah, you know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, so a lot of motherfuckers didn't realize they were, like, I'll be hanging out with my little cousin, and we go to the store, and they'd be following us around the store, and he wouldn't notice, but I would. Damn. So it's like, if it wasn't for me pointing it out to him, he would never know, and he'd be mm. going, and he'd be like in his 20s before he realized, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and they would be so people think that they're not being racially profiled, which you really are, you just don't notice, you don't know it, yeah. yeah. That's clean shit because yeah, by the time I start realizing, then I start recollecting all the times mm-hmm. that happened. Back yeah, then, it was like, yeah. Oh, that's because I, I had white, I had, I had mad, I had mad white friends and black friends, and it was like I did notice certain differences. One. But it oh, was yeah, like yeah, the one, the, the Luke, one white boy yeah, in Camelot. Yeah, there was one, yeah, there was one, one white boy. <laughs> oh, it in front was of one white boy. I forgot his name. Lucas. I remember this. Lucas. Lucas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember Lucas. Yeah. yeah. That was my man. Hey, I wonder where Lucas man. is at now, man. Yeah, shout that's out to Luke. Flying man. planes, bro. Word? Air Force, an officer. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. His sister, damn, something. She an officer in the uh, army. That's fire. Yeah. I remember Lucas, yeah. yo. Yeah. Shout out to Lucas, man. Yeah, yeah man. I don't, the culture shock is different, man. Especially when we was growing up back then. Yeah. Okay, that's another thing, too, because like I said last time about how I, uh, I always had white friends. So that's another mm-hmm. thing that I would, would help me notice patterns of things different. Because, uh-huh. like, like they say, they tell y'all that racism is taught to white folks. That's shit real. Because, like, when you a kid, ain't no black white. So I'm just, to mm-hmm. them, it's just like, hey, mom, this is my friend. And, mm-hmm. like, all the kids is cool, but the parents looking like, yeah. I can tell you. There's a nigger in my house. Hold on. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> yeah. climbing, I'm going to tell you, climbing now, because my daughter came home with this Thursday. Oh, man. Some riding the bus. Coming home. Now, mind you, she go to Camelot. So, coming home oh, from man. the bus, uh-huh. um, some white girl said to another black girl beside my my daughter, uh-huh. you're ugly because you're black. Oh, man. And so... Oh, yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. You're ugly because you're black. And she was just like, my daughter came to me. I guess she told her mom the story. Her mom was like, go to your daddy. Uh, and so she came yeah. to me with So you had all the black power Because your shit? mom Probably yeah. mom was ready to fire her up I, I, yeah. I know that I know So that, she was like that. Go to your dad <laughs> Go to your dad I know that means And so it's like cold for I'm ready to fuck I know what that's cold for <laughs> So um, she, hit, she hit me up And was yeah, like yeah, yeah so Why did she say that And I, and all I could tell her Was like baby You don't know what goes on In people's household And she was taught that And she thought it was okay To come outside oh. With mm-hmm. that And she was like But why would she say that And it's all of us here. I'm like, what do you mean all of us? She's like, nothing but black kids on the bus. Why would she do that? Mm, it would have had sense. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She has a lot she of like, good why sense. why would she do that? And I was like, baby, she was like, all, all I could do is go tell the, the, the teacher. I mean, the um, bus driver. Uh-huh. And I was like, okay, good. I was like, did you hear it? Make sure you heard it before you go telling and everything mm-hmm, else. Mm-hmm. You know, just yeah, yeah. don't go by. No, he say she's saying whoop de whoop and all that stuff. And she was like, yeah, but my my friend was crying. Oh man! And so it's just like that's fucked up. She kind of she asked me why was she crying? Cause don't she know that black is beautiful? And I'm like, okay, good. Oh, you doing the, yeah, you're doing a good Something job. Something fucking right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know? I know, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah, yeah. Like, I feel shouldn't you. be ashamed <laughs> of that and everything. And then she went back to the white girl. Because, mind you, we got a mixed-in family. So, we have mm-hmm. white, we got Filipino, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. that's mixed in in our family. So, like, so why would she say that? And I, was just, I had to reiterate again. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her people in her house is fucked up. Yeah. They're racist. And this is what they talk. This is how they talk behind closed doors. Mm. And she thought it was okay. There wasn't that. And most what kids you just do repeating with that, what they hear. See. What you do with that is you just feed that with a long-handled spoon. You ain't got to be mean to her, but just play her back. Yeah, Stay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Just, you know, you might not want to be too close. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She said she was just joking. It was April Fool's joke. That's nah, not a goddamn that's not a joke. joke. So now she knows she was wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. 
So yeah, now, saying that to get just play trouble. her off. Leave her alone. That's crazy. Let her be. And That's she was like, love. okay, okay. And like, I was, and, I, and all I had, I was like, how old are you? How old are you? How old are uh-huh. you? I'm like, nine. So I'm just registering my head. Her first, yeah, she got the it. first one she brought home was nine. And I'm like, God damn. She's damn. fucking nine. And that's sad for those like, little girl because they probably give her a complex if she's not strong. Oh, they somebody gonna... telling her, mm-hmm. like, yo, you beautiful. Don't worry about like, that. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, I was just like, Ugh. okay, okay, just uh, okay, one more thing. I said, I said that was the last question. I got one more. Let's, let's go back to a conversation I had with my dad recently, mm-hmm. where I told my pops a, a story about some shit that happened to me that just wasn't cool at all when I was a teenager, and uh, it happened. It, was, it happened for my adults, and my dad looked at me. And he was like, "Why you ain't telling me this?" And I said, "Because you never had my back." He's like, "What?" Damn. I said, I said "Name one time I came to you with some shit from from the school, and you didn't take the teacher's side, and you took everybody else's side, even when they was lying on me and some old shit. Like you should have known better. Like you should have known that your son didn't do the shit, but you always took their side." Then I was like, "Give me one time where you had my back," and he like, "Finish telling the story, nigga." So, <laughs> so I'm saying, so uh, what what do y'all do to make sure that your kids will bring shit to you? Because like I said, I got to a point of just I don't I didn't bring anything to them because I just felt like I was on my own. I'm on Damn. his road right now. My dad yeah. never did shit for me. Damn. So um, towards my Mike, 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 Mike. Yeah. My my dad never did shit for me to believe shit he was saying. Period. That's that's the reason I know how to treat my son. Cause my dad didn't treat me like yeah. that. So oh, you learned man. what not to do. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only reason I know how to be a fairly decent father. Because my dad wanted. It. Damn. To give to, yeah, so be what you didn't have. Yeah. Basically, yeah. be what least, you be least, what you need. Yeah. At least yeah. you can yeah. see that and know that though. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. like it's so easy for a lot of guys or anybody to be like, "This mm-hmm. is how this how it's taught to me. This how I'm gonna teach it to you, and just keep the mm-hmm. keep the whole messed up process going mm-hmm. instead of being like, "Man, I gotta break this shit. This shit is not right." Yeah. So, so uh, has having a son made your relationship with your dad better or worse or nothing? Had no effect. There is no effect. Oh, okay. It's nothing. Damn. To me, you and your man, little man, y'all got that. That's dope. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. like, so I mean, you, all, uh, have you got to a point where you were, were you forgiven your dad for the way he raised you? I take that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't blame my dad for anything. I don't, I don't blame my dad for nothing. So has he been forgiven? I don't know. Okay, I mean, right. this is work in progress. No, nah, there's there's no relationship there. No, but I mean the the forgiving part is you. Is up to you. Yeah. Have you forgiven him. Oh yeah, me or me or personally, not? yeah. Yeah, have All you forgiven day. so he's been forgiven then. So if, like you can respect the fact like, hey, I can understand what you did and how you did it. I just know I ain't yeah. doing it that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you yeah, know what you mean? Done, you done been up there. We didn't we didn't got damn we, we didn't have those conversations with because you know, Kevin has met my dad. Mm-hmm. Spent yeah, he spent a amount of time around my dad, yeah, yeah. but me, nah, is you haven't you haven't shown me a man. You haven't. That's deep. You haven't taught me something. You haven't taught me anything mm-hmm. as a man. Mm-hmm. You haven't taught me anything as a father. What are you? You're not doing nothing for me. I want my son to fucking excel. Yeah. Beyond what I'm, what I could provide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My dad ain't there. He's he's not, and I don't, I don't care. I mean, I don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it, it sucks. You know, I got, I got my own, my own brothers. That's, they got their own relationship with him. Cool, whatever, whatever. Yeah, y'all deal but, with it different ways. Yeah, yeah you just focusing on your little man. Yeah, y'all me, you and your kids. Nah. Yeah. I, I don't care. He taught you what not to do. That's it. Hey. Yeah. You, you, yeah, hey. And that's and that's that. That yeah. Hey. At least yeah. it's that. You know what I mean? All I right. wish it was yeah. different, but it ain't. And this was it. Hey, it's like a good note to end on. We uh anything else you might want to add on? Nah man. I appreciate man coming through, man. Like I appreciate you coming invite, through, man. man. This yes, is sir. dope, same, man. Same. I'm all about I mean, I'm down to talk about whatever, any content. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. We'll have you back on. Yeah, so I'm all, I'm always watching, I'm always checking out on Instagram. Uh, YouTube, like, I appreciate it, man. Like, dope, right. dope. Thanks, man. Yes, sir. All right. Well, this has been another episode of We, we Ain't No, no Stupid, and we out. Yes, sir. Deuces. Deuces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get into the money.
Fucking these hoes, hopping. Sipping that drink. I'm way too throat, hopping. Hitting these licks. I'ma hit a few more, hopping. Winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. They say I've been on the road. Whoa. Whole vacation enough, I was playing too much I free agent it up on Jamaican I puff rolling papers, I'm stuck By agar my dosi, I made it get up I've been caking enough, like I'm baking too much And my apron is yuck, they like save me a cut But the way it's set up, these clippers ain't free And that blueprint is due, I can't save you a cut They be hating too much, you mighty mouth niggas be saying too much Low key when I'm driving that red, white and blue And them boys in that blue try and patriot you up I don't play with them cuffs, uh That's that shit I don't like I was G before likes, on IG you got likes Cause you feeding them hype And they greedy tonight, you can't see what I sight But I sight what you see Like I'm Gucci Yoli, I got Gucci and V ERS to the ace Or that's A, C and E, shit is A, B and C Some don't make it to T Some don't make it to G Daddy put him in mama And she been in for daddy They created the G, that creation was me And I got it on lock I created the key and my sign is a vice and them bitches got scales Tryna wave me a key that was D-O-P-E Don't you P-O the G Cause she can get dirty, gets P-O's and P I'm the guy to this shit That make you P-O-P-E's uh. To the money, fucking these hoes, hopping, sipping that drink, I'm way too throat, hopping, hitting these licks, I'ma hit a few more, hopping, winning, I'm winning, I'm winning, they say I've been on the road, whoa.